Okay, perfect. All right, it does tell us. Okay, perfect. Hey, everybody. My name's Taylor, and I am on the channel Tales and Treats with Tay, and I am joined by a special guest, Christy. She is an author now. She wrote uh, Ar Ariadri and the Legend of the Fire Rose. I bought my own copy. I have to figure out how the mirroring situation works here, but um, yes, here it is. And so she is a new author. So I thought it'd be fun to ask her some questions and um, ask her about the book because I need to know. I finished it last night and is an excellent read. So I highly recommend it. Um, but also I thought maybe some viewers might be interested about like the writing process and what it looks like getting published. Yeah. How did you get started writing? So really ever since I was in kindergarten, I... Yeah. Well, when I was in kindergarten is actually when it started. So my teacher actually talked to my mom about a little story I wrote. And she was like, she's a, she's a really good little writer. And that just kind of like put the idea in my head. And I'm like five. So I'm just like, okay, I don't, <laughs> I don't know what any of this is. Like I am. Okay, great. But like as time went on, um, a lot of the teachers started to say the same thing. And then when I was nine and 10 years old, I entered these writing contests two years in a row. I ended up winning them mm -hmm. and it was through the school. And I think it was around that time that I was like, okay, like this is what I want to do. But mm -hmm. it ended up happening <laughs> because it ended up taking me like a really long time to actually become an author um, mm -hmm. was when I was 13, I actually attempted to write my first book and I finished it. It was like 80 typed pages. That's pretty computer. impressive for, for a 13 year old though. So, and it was like about these like missionaries that got kidnapped in like Panama or something like Central America. It was like wow. mystery. And um, so I guess technically that was like Christian fiction, like contemporary. Hmm. And like the story was about how like these middle schoolers like ended up solving the mystery. <laughs> that's what I was that's what I was in middle school at the but time. You knew. Yeah, that's what you yeah. knew. I was so excited and I was so proud of my work and I like gave it to my mom. She read it. She was like, great job. And then um I gave it to my grandmother. Now the story with my grandmother is that she had wanted to be a writer her entire life. And yeah. in fact like our, our, I guess it was her grandfather, my like great, great, great grandfather. He was like a journalist. Like that was his job. He was a writer. Yeah. So it kind of like ran in the family and yeah. her whole life. She, she wants to be a writer and she would like talk about it. I remember her talking about it like to me when I was a child. So I was like, okay, I want to like give her my first book, you know? Yeah. So she wrote it <laughs> and she sent it back. And it was like totally marked up. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> like this changed that, like red marks everywhere. And I was like, Grandma did not go. Oh, you know, like, when you're 15, you just need like a good job, you know? <laughs> she took that serious. <laughs> it broke my heart. Like, I was like, oh. oh no. Like, I just could not handle it. Like, and then on top of that, she like, she like suggested I read all these books, like ch check books out from the library and stuff. And I just remember one of the first books I read, like the first page, it said, you have a less than 1% chance of ever getting published. And I was like, uh, yeah, that's <laughs> okay. Cool. Like, I mean, that was back a really long time ago. So I was like, like a crush a little kid's dream. I know. Yeah. Me. It was so sad. So I just kind of like it, my dream died <laughs> like right yeah. there. And um, I remember when I was 16, I I still I still had it in me. I I was like, okay, let me try again because I got really inspired. I went to this beautiful setting in uh, the New York mountains, and I got like really really inspired mm -hmm. to write a Regency <laughs> of all things because I I'd been kind of been reading some Regency books at the time. Yeah. So I attempted to write that, but I never finished it because the internet. I mean, they Google didn't even really exist yet. Like it was, just, yeah, it was just like it was so hard to do research. And I tried like getting some books from the library, but it just wasn't like helping me very much. Mm -hmm. So 
this kind of fizzled out and died. And then I just, I, I went, I went on with life. I was just really busy. I was like, well, maybe this just isn't really what I'm supposed to do, you know? Mm. So flash forward many years later, it is now 2017 and I'm in my thirties. And I started to really just think about like, what do I want to do with my life? <laughs> and it just kept coming back to me. Like, write a book. Like, that's what I want to do. I feel, it's like, if there, if you could do like one thing before you die, like it was mm-hmm. right. Book, you know? Yeah. And I was like, and I just kept thinking, well, when I'm really old and like retired, maybe I'll try. Again. <laughs> <laughs> but it would, it didn't, it didn't leave me. And I was just really inspired by the setting. I live in North Carolina and like, it's beautiful there's there. trees. yeah, there's trees and stuff. And I just, I kept thinking about it and I was like, well, if I did write a book, what would it, like you know <laughs> like I just kept like thinking about this and at the time I was working at a flower shop and <laughs> if you read uh, this yeah it's really inspired by like gardening and, f- and flowers and things like that and I one of my jobs was like I had to drive around and like deliver the flowers and so I had a lot of time to myself to just like think and mm-hmm. this story started to come and it was <laughs> gosh, I just kind of like, oh, this is fun too. So then I ended up going from working at the flower shop to getting like a part-time nanny job with some older kids. It was the first time I ever did like older kids, you know, they were like eight and 12 and Mm -hmm. um, four or something like that. And um, I started telling the girl, the little girl, the story and she really liked it. Like I just started like bouncing things off her. What about this? What about this? Oh, cool. <laughs> While we were like jumping on the trampoline. <laughs> like, <it was> just... <laughs> and um, the little girl's name is Maggie. <laughs> so that's, she... Okay. Yeah. That's a character. Yeah. Maggie is based off of a, a real little girl. So, um, so yeah, it was just, um, I just kind of played with it. I picked at it. Um, I, I want to say that was like, we're now we're like in 2018 or something like that. So I just worked on a little bit here, worked on a little bit there, but it was still like really far off because I was like, I was really just busy living life, you know, like I'm, I'm married now. So I like, you know, with my husband and everything, I'm just like, I had a lot going on and am I really supposed to like devote any time to this? That's what I kept asking myself. Mm. So then COVID happens, <laughs> the whole <laughs> lockdown and everything. And I was like, you know, a lot of the things I've been doing, like everyone else just like stopped, you know, like mm-hmm. I was like, okay, I have all this time now and <laughs> I'm probably never going to have this much time in my entire life ever again. So I prayed, Lord, like, what do you want me to do with this time? <laughs> and it was just like, I just kept getting this like picture in my head of like, writing a book. And I, I just knew it. I felt it in my heart. Like I was like, okay. And I kept praying like, are, okay, are you sure Lord? Are you sure? And it, like, then I'd be like in church and I'd all of a sudden, sudden start thinking about like writing this book and just getting like inspirations. And I was like, okay, I guess that's what I'm supposed to do. So <laughs> I worked on it for several months. I want to say I started it like April of 2020, which is like right after everything shut down. Yeah, yeah, right after, yeah. Yeah, and I and I was like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. And I worked on it for, I was working on it till probably July. I didn't tell anybody. I didn't even tell my husband until Your one project. day. <laughs> until one day he was like, what are you doing? <laughs> You're on the computer all the time. <laughs> and I was like, I'm writing a book. <laughs> I was so embarrassed. And I was almost done. I, I think I ended up finishing it um, like a month or two later and I let him read it. And he was like, he was like, oh, this is good. And I'm a guy. <laughs> like, <laughs> That's hilarious. He just like, he really like believed in it and like, wow, became, like my best cheerleader. Yeah. Go and, ahead. Yeah. And there, I mean, I can go into this later, but like, there was just a lot of times where I wanted to give up and I I wanted to quit. And he kept like, like encouraging me and just be like, no, mm-hmm. no, you know, this is, this is what you're going to do. Yeah. Like, you can do this. So, yeah. 
So um, also what was happening during this time is, um, funny enough, my grandmother, the the one that like killed my <laughs> dream. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She li lived in Connecticut my whole life. And I lived in the DC area. Funny enough, my aunt and uncle ended up getting transferred down to North Carolina, like 30 minutes from where I live. And my, her and my grandfather moved with them because they were like, we need somebody to like take care of us. Mm -hmm. So she's only 30 minutes away from me now. And so, um, and during COVID, she got diagnosed with dementia and she was starting to have a really, really hard time. And I just, something in my heart just was like, I, I need to help her. So I would, I was like traveling back and forth, like every other day, visiting her, like, um, you know, trying to take her on walks, get her out of the house as much as possible during that time because of all the quarantine yeah. stuff. And that was really hard yeah. because she, she was in an assisted living home and, and they were having like serious quarantine, like couldn't leave their room for like a, re a really long time, which is, did not help her condition at all. Yeah, yeah for so, sure. Yeah. So it was like, so the whole time I'm like, I need to help her. I need to help her because I'm writing this book and I want her to know, but I don't want to tell her yet. <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> so, <laughs> so finally I, I finished it and I, and I ended up telling her about it and she was so excited. Aww. And she, I remember she read, she read the first chapter and she was like, she said, this girl can write. And that was <laughs> like, well, that means more. Yeah, it means that more. That was the best, time. like, moment <laughs> ever. So here's the thing. At this point, it was only, I think we're, like, in 2021. By the time I got it, I felt like it was good enough for her to actually, like, read it. Mm -hmm. And um, I found out. Then I started the whole, like, okay, I need to get this, like, published so I like sent it off to this company that supposedly like distributes it to all the big Christian publishing houses. And um, I didn't really hear <laughs> anything. And yeah. I was like, you know, that's okay. Cause it, my strategy was like, if I don't hear anything, I'll do indie publishing. And so I, I started going down that route and I was like, okay, I, I just, I feel like something is wrong with my book, but I don't know how to fix it. So I was like, maybe I should like start reading some books about like craft and like how to write and everything yeah. and um, actually get into the writing community. And mm -hmm. so I got a bunch of books and I started listening to writing podcasts and um, there's just a lot of great resources out there now for indie authors. And mm -hmm. I realized that yes, I had some innate storytelling ability, but there was a lot I did not know about writing. <laughs> and that was okay. I, I was like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to go to writing university now. I'm, <laughs> I'm just going to yeah this out. And so I started reading these books and I, then I went back and I looked at my manuscript and I was like, <gasps> <laughs> so much stuff. Oh my goodness. So I did like this complete like overhaul of like wow. all the, it was it took me so long. I want to say it took me like four to six months or whatever goodness. to do that. It was just a really long time. And then um then I was like, okay, I need to go about like getting like, editing. What am I gonna do? Like I don't have money for this. Like mm -hmm. but it turns out my little sister, she volunteered for it. She's <laughs> she's really great and so she essentially became like my developmental editor. And so I gave it to her and she basically went through and made sure like all my characters were consistent, that like my ideas lined up, like my details. She's like a really detail-y person. Mm -hmm. And I have to say she did a phenomenal job, like because the changes she told me to make were like, I was like, yeah, you know, I was like at the point where I was, I was willing to do whatever it took. Like I wasn't personally like, um, like so attached to the words that I was like going to cry if we had to cut something or change something. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I was like, I I'll do whatever I need to. <laughs> and, um, so, so she, um, she really, really helped me with that. And then um, I like, 
through the whole process, I guess I'll just talk about the whole process after that, like kind of how it came to be. But um, I was going to have my, my other sister is an artist and I was going to have her do the cover design, but she was just really busy and it was just really hard for her to like put anything together. And then I was like, well, maybe I should just do it myself. Like, I don't know. Like, and then one day I woke up and I was like having, it wasn't like a panic attack, but I was just like, really like freaked out about my cover. I was like, I need to have a good cover. I need to have a good cover. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I, I don't know. I think it was like the Holy spirit or something because like, um, I, then I went over to my bookshelf and I was like, okay, what covers am I drawn to the most? Mm-hmm. And I like, started pulling them off and I, and it was like the Melanie Cellier ones and like Deb Grace White and all of them. They were really pretty covers. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, so then I looked in the front of their book and it turns out it was like the same person that like designed like all my favorite covers. <laughs> So I was like, okay, <laughs> I need to like contact them. And then, so I did, and her name was Carrie and she was amazing. Like she wasn't as expensive as I thought she was going to be. And um, just working with her was so, so fun. It was so good. So now I actually had like a professional cover, you know? Yeah. Yeah. When I saw it for the first time, I was like, so I freaking see, but like, I was like, the first time I saw it, I was like, wow, that's impressive. <laughs> Like it looks so nice and the font and everything. And then uh, kudos, like kudos for that. The one on the side, highly appreciate that. That must be the reader and you coming out right there, making sure it was on there. I'm like, she did it then. She did the thing. She made sure. Appreciate yeah, it. Definitely. And um, so then the same thing kind of happened with an editor too, because then I started getting some beta readers. Like after after I felt like it was in, in really good shape. And, you know, my sister had gone through it and everything. Um, I gave it to my other sister, Amy, who's like a bookstagrammer. <laughs> and I told her, I was like, Amy is actually the one in the book trailer. So, um, I was oh, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I said, you should do book too. She's like, I don't got time, but she does, she does like bookstagram and stuff. So, okay. um, <laughs> so I knew she would have some good input for me. And um, I gave it to my cousin who also reads a lot. Like she reads like a lot of fantasy and stuff like that. So, Mm -hmm. and then after my cousin had it, um, she's like a teacher. So she's like, (laughs) (laughs) again, (laughs) I had that moment again of like panic. I was like, I think I really need like a professional editor, (laughs) you know, like a, like a copy editor. Like I just, and so I found, I'd, I'd heard of this one. It came hi- highly, she came highly recommended from Emma St. Clair. So oh, no. I was like, I was like, okay. And I decided to go with that editor and I'm so glad I did. It was the best investment I ever made because apparently I had like the wrong verb tense, like half my story. <laughs> it would have been a disaster. <laughs> like it would have been so bad. So she, she really helped me. She helped me clean it up, get everything together, you know? Mm. So, um, so yeah. Okay. So going back to my whole, like with my grandmother and everything. So like, I guess like, it's like 2021, 2022, something like that. And I'm, and this whole time I'm like, I need to edit it. I need to fix it. It's just taking a really, really long time. And um, and the whole time, you know, my grandmother is just like declining, you know, and I'm thinking like, I'm running out of time. This is like horrible. She's like losing her memory. She's not even going to like remember. Mm-hmm. That I'm like writing this book. She's not going to remember like anything about it. Mm-hmm. And, um, and it was really interesting because before I, or she lost her memory completely, I had actually asked her, or I was talking about how, like, when I was 13, like, it just, like, came up in conversation. I was like, don't you remember, like, the book that I wrote, and you, like, marked it all up? And she's like, I did? Like, she uh, didn't yeah. even remember, like, oh, no. this was before she was gone. So it was just like, she was like, I didn't do that, you know? <laughs> like, oh, she no, no, no. You know, and, um, and I was like, yeah, 
you did. And I just remember thinking like, I'm so glad that I decided to try again because like that was like a huge moment in my life but like she didn't even like remember that she did that you know yeah and, um so I'm just I'm really really glad that I that I gave it another shot but anyway this whole time she's declining and she's go to, getting to the point where like my grandfather died like her husband died like seven years ago she didn't she didn't even remember that like he died <laughs> she was like where she, she'd be like, where's my husband? Did he go out to the store? And we're like, oh no, you know, it's just like, like, how do you, yeah, it's, it's, that, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, but the weird thing was the whole time it was like, she was losing these like huge memories in her life, starting to forget that she even like moved to North Carolina. Like she thought she was still Connecticut and stuff, but she still remembered that I wrote a book. Like oh, she, wow. like, yeah. And I, I think we saw her, it was like Thanksgiving of this past year. Couldn't remember my grandfather had died. Couldn't remember what state she was in, but she was like, when is this book going to come out? Because I, this is really important to me. And I, I really want to, you know, I was like, you know, <laughs> yeah, 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 wow. like at that point I was like, I did not expect her to even like remember that. And so on, on the release day, or she, she continued to decline and they had to move her to like a special like room to like care for her. Mm. And I'm thinking there's like no way she's going to remember this. So I went and visited her on release day and I put the book in her hands and she remembered. She, oh, wow. her face lit up. She Aww. was like, she was so overjoyed. She was like, it's finally here. And I was oh, like, oh my goodness. It was the best moment. Like, I just can't, I can't even describe it. I mean, I had Kevin take a picture. I don't oh. know, maybe you can flash it up on the screen. <laughs> I'll just show you. I have to figure out how to do that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, let me see. Oh my goodness. I got teary eyed with that one. Like, my goodness. Yeah, I had it. I was like, I I would have cried that day, but there was like all these workers standing around. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> oh no. But yeah, that's like me and her. Oh, <laughs> bless. That's so cute. Yeah, she, yeah. yeah, that was a great moment for both y'all, like a family dream come true. Like, yeah. yeah. Wow. That's an awesome story. Like, your first book and, and, yeah, that whole journey that was that was an awesome story that was very fascinating like it was yeah all the family that went into it to help you create it like I knew I knew that it was hard work to create a book I mean especially your first book but like that was a really a family effort and wow that makes it even more special that's that's amazing yeah and I have to brag on my husband a little bit he actually just walked in okay <laughs> so there was more to this story because like just kind of the struggle that we went through because um you know like i said he just he read the story and he just really really believed that like this is what i was supposed to do and he really wanted to help me and at the time i was coaching gymnastics and well this is like after everything kind of opened up so i was coaching gymnastics and i was also like doing like an online tutoring and like teaching mm -hmm. And that ended up like the company ended up like shutting down or whatever. And so I suddenly lost like half my income mm -hmm. and he was like, I was like, what should I do? Like, should I get another job? Like, what are, he's like, just, just write your book. Like, wow. I, like I will work overtime. Oh like, yeah, no, I'm serious. And so he, it was really hard. Cause he was like, some days he'd work like 14 hours and, mm -hmm. You know, he'd just be so tired and, and the, and like, you know, years are going by, you know, cause it's, it was like end of 2021, 2022. And, and I was like, what should I do? Should I just like get another job? I feel like really bad, you know, like I'm just like sitting here, like working on this. And um, he's like, nope, nope. Just, just write your book because it's just going to take longer if you, if you get another job. And um, it got really hard when our car died. Oh, <laughs> so no. we were one car so like we we literally have 
been because like the economy is so bad now we were like well we don't really want to buy anyone anyway like we probably could have had it been like two or three years ago but like yeah. now it's just like uh so so i started having to take like ubers to work to get to the gym like every day i did that for like a year just you know like yeah. just really like put a lot into this like just like the struggle like but the whole time he just he just really believed and um, kept cheering me on. And so that's why the book got dedicated to him. This first book. <laughs> I read the dedication. I was like, there's a story behind that. Like I oh, can yeah. tell. I mean, he really was like my hero. Like he was cheering me on the whole time. He sacrificed so much. Just, I mean, he believed. So yeah, I mean, I just, I can't think of enough. <laughs> yeah. That's true love right there. Like that's, and it's someone you want as a partner in life to some, someone who will sacrifice and help you get to your dreams. So that's awesome that, that you have each other. So yeah, that's <laughs> perfect. Um, yeah, I, that was very helpful for me. Cause like, it's, you know, if you really want it, you know, we can make it happen type of thing. And then also like, you know, you're talking about, you know, it wasn't the right time and like, you know, eventually it got to be the right time after you prayed and all that. So it's just looking at the Lord working and, and, you know, getting it when it needed to be out there. Cause like of the timing, that was, that was a picture of, of all that. So, um, let's see. So I think you've covered a little bit. Cause one of my questions was, what was your inspiration for this book in particular? So I think you covered that a little bit with, with all the the scenery and I know exactly what you're talking about. So I was really curious though, um, about the, you know, there's the, the garden rooms and all that. If there was a particular spot that had in, inspired that. Um, I think it was just, okay. So when I was growing up, I, I was like a total like gardening nerd. Like I used to study like the Latin names of flowers. <laughs> <laughs> I have so many garden books and gardening magazines. And so when I was young, like a teenager, I was like, I would love to have like this massive, like garden maze or like mm -hmm. garden room, like all these garden rooms where like each room had a different theme. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Yeah, so I just kind of like incorporated my like biggest dream and <laughs> yeah, make it a reality in fiction. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty cool. Yeah, I thought about that too. Like, I do not have a green thumb whatsoever, but I love looking at gardens. So, like, I loved reading that, like, seeing all the gardens and like picturing all that and all the beauty. And it just kept going on. Like, the the more she walked through the store, I'm like, oh, there's another part. Like, this is you know, it was really cool. Um, and I can definitely see the, the love of gardening. I think you put in your Q and a, um, you know, you can see that influence in my book. And I was like, yeah, I can totally see the influence of gardening. It's really interesting how all the characters are named after flowers and you listen to all the flowers and it just helped picture it more. I'm like some, honestly, some of the flowers, I have no idea what they are, but, but, <laughs> but I know some of them and I'm like, okay, I'm picturing, I'm picturing. So it was really, really detailed and, um, yeah, that's really cool. Like, I wish it was. I wish it was real, so I could walk through walk through it all. Which reminds me, like your book trailer. I was curious of where that was filmed and how that trailer came about and all of that. Yeah, that was another thing. It just felt like a total god thing, like right mm -hmm. from the start, because I just remember like looking around the area. You know, like I haven't lived here my whole life, so I don't really know like what's <laughs> around. Right. And I, I started, I ended up doing, <laughs> um, starting to do, uh, photography again, which I had done like, like five or six years. Like, gosh, I had done it like from 2010 to like 2015 or something. I kind of stopped. Mm -hmm. Um, and it wasn't until I got pregnant with my first little baby, which ended up going to heaven, but, um, it through miscarriage, but like, that I was like, I need to do something else. Like I need to replace the gymnastics income. So that's when I started looking at that. And I was thinking like, if I had just done that earlier, we probably would have like <laughs> had less of a struggle. But, um, but anyway, I happened to like, somebody wanted like an engagement session. And so I started looking around and um, I found this one like garden center or mm -hmm. it was like, it was a horticultural gardens. And I was mm -hmm. like, 
oh, that looks interesting. And all I saw was one picture. The pictures online did not do it justice. Like, I mean, when you get there, it's like absolutely gorgeous. But like, there was one picture that was like this door. It was like a gate that's wow. that's in the trailer. Yeah. And I was like, I wonder. And <laughs> we girls ended up not even picking that that place to go for the engagement session. Um, but I was like, I need to check this place out because this just might be good for my book trailer. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so I went there um, and I was blown away. I mean, it was absolutely beautiful. It was like perfect. Like they kind of had little garden rooms. Like I was just like, mm -hmm. I feel like this place was like made for, <laughs> for what they wanted, yeah. you know? And then like, I was even more excited that like, I was scared that that door was not going to be able to like open and you could like actually go through it and like, it, and then like just the walls, like everything about yeah. it. And um, it's called like Sand Hills Horticultural Gardens or whatever. Um, <laughs> if anybody's interested, if you want to go there, yeah, I'm like, I kind of want to go see this place. It's, yeah, really and, cool. it's, um, it's like an it's in Southern Pines, North Carolina, so it's like an hour away from me. Um, but so I would I would go there like all the time if it was closer. Honestly, <laughs> like it was so. Yeah, I wouldn't blame you. Yeah, it's really pretty. <laughs> so yeah, so then we then we go go to that day. Amy is coming all the way from California because that's where she lives. And we're about to go um, to Myrtle Beach on like a family vacation. Mm -hmm. And so we planned it that like she would come like the day before and we mm -hmm. would film this trailer. Well, the problem with North Carolina is that it rains a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so she arrives and I'm in the forecast the day, like she arrived like a Thursday we were going to film a Friday and leave for the beach Saturday. Mm. And the the forecast the whole day on Friday was rain. And so I say to her, oh, my gosh, Amy, I'm like, you're here one day. Like, what are we going to do? Yeah. And, um, and she, she was like, it's okay. We'll just film it, like, on the way to the beach because it's kind of a little bit on the way. And I'm, like, thinking, oh, that's going to be so stressful. Like, yeah. oh. Um, well, turns out we wake up the next morning and we have like an hour block of time. Like the forecast has like one hour where it's not going to be raining. And I was like, Amy, <laughs> let's go. Run, <laughs> run, get there. <laughs> so she was, she was for it and, um, you know, gets all costumed up and everything. And the whole time we're driving there and it is still raining. And I was like, Amy, it says it's not raining where we're going. It's <laughs> <laughs> and she's just like, okay, you know, and, um, sure enough, we get there and it's not raining. Thank goodness. And on top of that, what a blessing. No one's there. <laughs> like we had no, the whole thing. No, like, like, oh. that, that was truly a blessing. Yeah. Um, because people. yeah, yeah. The fire rose bush. Um, I had to buy it. It's like a fire rose tree. It was like a rose tree and mm. I had to like carry it with me. It, it's, it's huge. I'm like walking ah. through the garden. I was like, I hope they don't think I'm like stealing their plant. Oh, no. <laughs> and so I'm like walking there, like, <laughs> like I had to put oh, it like, right here. Uh, you know, and it turned out it was just, it was amazing because, um, you know, the, the, it, the overcast light, like, you know, so cloudy from the rain, it yeah. created like, this nice, even light. Like we didn't have to worry about like any harsh shadows on her face yeah. or it yeah. be too hot. Cause she was like in like long sleeves and it, I mean, it was August. It was just so oh, much brutal. Yeah. Yeah. So um, <laughs> that is a blessing right there. That's a big blessing for her. Yeah. And then on top of that, it was like something happened with my cam, my camera battery. I think I grabbed like the one that was like bad or something. And I was like, like we get there and I'm only at like half power. Like, so we had like one hour to shoot it before it was going to start raining again. And then my camera battery is like dying. Oh, wow. <laughs> We're just going along. I'm like getting the shots and stuff, which when you see it, it's only like a couple, it's like a minute, but you need like a lot more shots like to pick from. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> so to make a long story short, I got the last shot I needed and then the camera dies. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, that was, 
<laughs> yeah, it was just, yeah, there's a, I, there's a lot more I could say about it, but um, yeah, there's, <laughs> I think maybe I'll make a video for my channel, like all about the behind the scenes of the trailer, because it was just like a lot. It was, it was fun. It was a fun time. And like I said, it, felt, it definitely felt like a God thing, like that, it, the way it came for together. Yeah, like all a perfect, perfect timing to get, get you what you needed for sure. Yeah. <laughs> And I have to say, like, I was impressed when you said, when you made the announcement that you, your book was released and you're like, I have a trailer. And I was like, what? <laughs> Kiddles for her. Like, she did all the things. Like, the the cover is phenomenal. Like, you know, she she has art readers, you know, and, and then the book trailer. And I was like, this girl, she means business with this book. Like, you did all the right things to grab people in. And then the story does its work, too. So, I think you did a phenomenal job, by the way, of having your first book. I was very impressed with all the whole package of of, of everything. Um, so that's awesome. So I think I can't remember if I mentioned on here or if it was when we were talking before we started filming, but I'm like, I need book two. So um, let's give us give us some ideas of when that when we might get that. No pressure, because I know baby's coming, so I know that that's, that's thrown in there too. But yeah, yeah, I've got, I've actually got. It right here. Oh, <laughs> don't do that to me. It's been um, it has been written, but um, like the first draft. Oh. Okay. And, however, I was just talking with my developmental editor, my sister, <laughs> and um, I think there's going to be. I haven't. I have not given her the first draft yet, but I, I just went kind of went through it one last time this past mm -hmm. week, and I really feel like there's going to be large portions of it I need to tweak. So yes, the first draft is done, but I really want to fix some things up before. <laughs> um, so, which makes things so complicated because in like five weeks, I'm going to be having a baby. <laughs> so, so yeah, I, that, that, <laughs> kind of, uh, that kind of impacts things a little bit, just a tad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and it's, it's really great though, because I, with how long it took me to write the first one, I definitely went a lot quicker with this one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. I'm excited as a reader. Like, don't, don't leave me hanging here. The, 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 yeah. the book ends on a bit of a cliffhanger. Like, oh, how could she do that? <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, I was, I was hoping, like, I wanted it to be like, I want people to keep reading, but I also wanted to give it enough closure that, like, you wouldn't hate yeah. me. So hopefully you don't. Yeah, it's it's a it's a mild cliffhanger. I'll give you that. Like you didn't like rip my heart out and stomp on it, which I appreciate. But also, I'm like, I need to know. I need yeah. to. Know. <laughs> so it was like a middle of the road. Like you know, like she gave me enough to like really want to know, but then also it was like not torturous. So thank you for that. <laughs> Yeah. So, um, yeah, at, at this point, I don't really want to announce a release date because I don't want I anyone to be like disappointed. And I, I do have to see like how it's going to be trying to write with a little baby. Like I'm totally going to be that mom where he's like sleeping <laughs> on my chest and I'm like, <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, I'm, I'm glad I'm hopeful that we won't get too long of a wait, hopefully, but no pressure. I get it. I get it. Um, yeah, I'm just looking at my questions um, to see what we haven't already covered. Um, is there sp is supposed to be three books? Um, four. Right now, four. the plan is four. And um, the book I'm actually the most excited about is the third book. Okay. So, yeah, because okay. I just, a lot of things really come together. And because, like, in book two, we're still kind of setting, I feel like it's, we're setting things up still like with what's kind of going on mm -hmm. but a lot of things a lot of great characters appear in book mm -hmm. three and that I just really love I just really like the dynamic and um so I just I can't wait to write it it's very at its most ba basic level it is plotted out like I know all the major plot points for mm -hmm. book three and book four because I was like I need to know what happens like I need to know yeah. how Right, you know, book, and then like, what do I do with this? <laughs> where, where I'm going with it, you know? Yeah. Because in book one, there are a lot of connections, I guess we'll say, like little Easter eggs 
mm-hmm. and things like that, that mm-hmm. once you read, they, they seem very insignificant, but once you get to book three or book four, you'll be like, oh. <laughs> when an author does that, it's very you know? ingenious. Yeah, yeah. So I had to know where I was going in order to like plant those little right. things. And my whole goal was like, I wanted to make the first book rereadable. Like I wanted people to like want to reread it and like enjoy Mm -hmm. rereading it Mm -hmm. so that they could actually like see the little connections and things. So yeah. Yeah. I'm not a big rereader, but I I'm pretty sure I'm like, depending on how long it is, but I how long it is until the second one, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to reread this one because I could, I could see that there's some Easter eggs and like little nuggets of stuff here that you'd go back and be like, Oh, okay. So how I know it's a fantasy book, so there's several creatures in here that that are quite interesting. Like how how you mesh different things together and created a whole new creature. And I'm like, she's got she's got the fan, fantasy element down of like different names for things. And I was just curious, like how you how you came up with that. I'm a fantastical world, fantastical mm-hmm. names of animals and beasts and creatures and all that. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I don't know if this is like spoilery, but like the dragon basically represents like Satan. <laughs> I, so, I thought so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, so basically these creatures in the story are like, I mean, there's a story that Ariadri tells like about it and she doesn't know it's like real. Mm-hmm. Um, it just, it's like a, you know, fan, uh, just a bedtime story kind of thing, mm-hmm. and, um, which I don't want to like spoil it, but basically these creatures in the story are like, they're like half dragon, half like something else or like mutated, like they're under the influence of the dragon. So they like changed kind of thing into something like awful and evil and ugly. So, um, so all of the, the, the creatures are like, you know, they came from like a regular deer or a regular bear, but they turned into something they weren't supposed to be at all. Oh, so, um, okay. And then yeah. that, now that you said that, I'm like, okay, that makes sense. Like, I see it now. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so the names and things that I came up with for them, I, I really tried to do this. Not all of them have like something that really like derives from their origins, but like, um, but some of them, it just kind of fell into place. Like, like the canavar is like a half wolf, half mm-hmm. dragon, like with dragon mm-hmm. elements kind of thing. And that comes from the canavar is like the Turkish word for like monster or beast. And then canavar can also mean wolf. So it just like fit. Oh, okay. Okay. Look at you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then Ursid is like um, a you know how like the genus and species and family and all that, like mm-hmm. bears are like from the family of like Ursid day or something. I don't know. It's like something Latin, like, so like Ursid like comes from bear. It kind of means like, oh, okay, bear. Okay. yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then I'm trying to think um, what the other ones were. Foxmuth. Hold on. There's another one. Oh, Foxmuth. Yeah. That one was just like a, it's a mix between like a, fox and a bat or like a dragon like it has like wings like a little Mm -hmm. dragon fox (laughs) so it just it was kind of like I just put fox together and like came up with something after it that sounded decent like foxmouth (laughs) so um, yeah and then scalo and voldebans they're that doesn't have anything to do with it it just more that like based on their descriptions I felt like the name just fit like it Mm -hmm. doesn't really match with anything um, I've heard of other uh, fantasy writers like using things that already exist to then just create your own and the elements of real life things are there. So that's, that's pretty cool. And then just came out up with your own word for the other ones. That's, I mean, that's pretty creative. I don't know if I could do that, but <laughs> that's yeah. pretty creative. there's a lot of, um, I love secret codes and I love hidden messages. Mm. So there's little things like that. Like um, I'll tell you the, the provinces, there's like a map in the front of the story. The mm-hmm. provinces, actually, the names of the provinces, they spell Ariadri. 
Really? Yeah. And um, okay. Yeah. So there's like there's other things like that um, oh, cool. in the story that are that I tried to. I just like it when things have like meaning or like. Yeah, I do too. Like, like <laughs> just you're so smart. I'm like I'm like oh okay that that's that's, that's so cool. I'm, yeah. So I'm maybe in the future, that. like. I'll do like a video of like all the secrets behind it. Cause I want yeah, people to do it first. I don't want to like spoil anything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm like, when you're on, do when you're all done with it, like that would be very, very interesting. Give us some back behind the scenes and that'll be really, really fun. Um, let's see. Uh, da -da 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 -da. uh, I know this is, we're getting near the end. Um, but I, I know this is kind of hard to answer cause you probably won't know. And, in five weeks, but, but what is your current schedule of what, like for a writer, like how, what does your schedule look like? Yeah. So, um, back when I was working at the gym, I would just, I would get maybe three, maybe four hours to write in the mornings. Um, mm -hmm. and then I would have to go to the gym, like, which would be anywhere from five to six hours or something. So I was still, it was like almost working full time, but like not like completely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like maybe with all my household things I had to do like three to four hours a day, I would write. And, um, uh, right now it's like anything goes <laughs> like I can, I literally like, it was so nice. I spent the whole day yesterday working on book two. Like I, it was like eight hours. <laughs> awesome. So, um, that is just for a short amount of time though, that I will have that much time. Mm -hmm. so, the only thing I can say is that with having a baby, one one thing I know that I am good at, which I think is a blessing, because a lot of other authors are they need like a long like a long block of time to mm -hmm. do it. But I'm pretty good at like just picking it up and working on it for 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. In fact, I find that that actually helps me because then you get kind of like a new set of eyes. Yeah. On stuff like ways to go and like rewrite it and you're like oh because like I just find that if I if I'm looking at it too too long like the same yeah. section then it's like it starts I don't know it just you kind of lose it and <laughs> you, yeah, you don't have like, a yeah. perspective on it mm -hmm. so in some ways it's actually better for me if I get these little short snippets of time to work on it which I know with a baby is all I'm gonna have so yeah that'll work perfect that'll work perfect yeah. yeah I'm glad you're already able to do that so that yeah that we can yeah. work so again really, yeah I'm really hoping like I can get it done quickly but at the same time I've never really thrown in the sleep deprivation into all of that so that's gonna be that's gonna be the test yeah <laughs> yeah I mean, we might get some real interesting characters in there for book three and four. <laughs> this, was, yeah. this was influenced by Christie's sleep deprivation. Oh, that's so hilarious. Oh, my goodness. Um, let's see. I think you already kind of mentioned that you'd previously um, written Christian fiction or like as a kid you did. But I was curious, like, would you do that later on? Is that something you would be interested in? Oh, um, the thing is, right now I've got plans for four books, uh, a spinoff. There's a character that shows up in the fourth book that I just oh. love, and I really, I they already have a story. Like that's how much I love them. It just came. Like wow. I need, to, I need to write this story because okay. it's going to be a Cinderella retelling, and I just love retellings. <laughs> so I mean, I'm not opposed to that at all, as you know. Yeah. I love that too. And it will tie in, it will tie in with the world. Like it'll, it'll make sense and everything, but, yeah. um, and then, um, I have plans for a prequel as well. So uh, okay. I don't think this is spoilerly, but there's a character in it named Farron and we're going to find out what happens or what happened. Okay. 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 Yeah. I was, I was curious. I was, I was thinking about that. I was like, I wonder if she's going to go back and <laughs> and do that because like the, I saw a hint of something that was said like a sentence uh I think it was some kind of characters like facial expression or so I forget exactly what it was and I was like huh I wonder if she's gonna do anything with that so that's exciting that you plan to yeah Yay. yeah I was reading it and I saw like I remember you saying like it's not Christian but 
you can see elements of it if you're looking for it. And I was like, as I particularly at the end, I was like, oh, okay, I see it. I see what she's doing here. And this is so good. Like there's a, I love it whenever, cause especially with why I love that there's like a hidden message and um, like a, a moral to the story, like something the character or characters learn and then vicariously the reader is learning too, particularly for the younger audience. Um, so that was very well done. But um, yeah, I was just curious if you thought about, but that's a lot of books out in right there. So I, yes. I, can, I can see how that would be like your focus for now. It's, it's possible that I will write. I don't want to say like, no, but I think as far as like where my heart is leading, I think I would probably try. I, I kind of want to, now that I've written a book and finished it, I kind of want to try that Regency <laughs> romance that I just started. I mean, I, I love those too. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, there, was a, there was a, there was a garden involved. I mean, of course, you know, so like. Of course. <laughs> that's Christy. That's Christy's signature. Some type of flower or plants will be involved. And I know I'm okay with that. That's, that's, <laughs> that's awesome. But uh, I think that was all my questions for real for now. I may like hit you up on Instagram or something like, yo, what, what's up with this? <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> but um, if anybody uh, watching has any questions, how can they reach you? Um, I guess you can always, you can always message me on Instagram and of course YouTube, like you can always comment on one of my videos, ask me something. Yep. I'll yeah. link the channel in the, com in the, I keep saying comment section, the description <laughs> box. I'll link it there in the book trailer so you can find it easy. But yeah, Christy is a fellow booktuber and um, you started booktubing before, um, before you announced, I guess you knew that like, obviously the, the story you, you shared, you knew you were going to write a book, but like you dropped that nugget on later on. I was like, <laughs> Oh, I'm writing a book. Well, it, it's funny. The, I didn't even know booktube existed and it was, it was because of Oshina that I found yep. it. She was the very first one I ever found. Yeah, no, yeah. Yeah, and so, and I, you know, I'm a reader. Like, it helps me write. Like, reading mm -hmm. helps me write just seeing how people describe things, the different characters, and I just mm -hmm. learn, I learn something from every book that I read. And right. it kind of, it kind of keeps me in the game. I don't know, that's the only thing. So I was already, like, reading a lot of books and there was a lot of authors that I just wanted to like share about and support. And I, and I, I didn't have any way to do that. But then when I found uh, booktube and then it wasn't until a um, book lover, Amanda's Southern Charm readathon that she just really like, it's me. Like, she's just like the best person ever. And like, she just <laughs> me, like made she me feel like, yeah. she just like, communicated that through her videos. Like she made me feel like I could do this. And I was like, and I prayed for a while about it. And I was like, okay, Lord, like, I don't know, like, should I? <laughs> and I just, I really felt peace in my heart. Like it was something I should do. And I, I don't regret it at all. Like it was, it was definitely like the best decision I have made on this whole like book journey, you know, like it's been so yeah. awesome. Like making friends, like getting to just talk about books all the time. What would awesome. I already yeah. love and um, just help like being able to support other authors and things like that. And it's just like this amazing, like supportive community that like, I feel like now I can't live without. So. <laughs> I know. I feel the same way. Yeah. You're, I'm glad you mentioned that. I don't think I knew that about your, your progression with your channel. Cause I literally same thing for me too. Oshina is how I found it. That I found some more people and then book lover, Amanda, she's like, you can do this. Like that message was clear. And I was like, okay, I can. And then yeah. I did it. So like, we oh have my gosh, that's awesome. Trajectory. Yeah. They know like, yeah, such powerful ladies. They're so awesome. <laughs> yeah, they are they are powerhouses in the Christian booktube community, encouraging people, and the the community really is is growing. Like I feel like I learn about someone at least once a month, like someone new, and it's really cool. But uh, uh, yeah, it's awesome. So yeah, if y'all have any questions for Christy, reach out to her. Go subscribe to her channel and pick up her book. Blaring here it is. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so. Um, uh, yeah, this is the end of this interview, and I will push the end recording button. But thank y'all so much for watching. Bye.